For more on what to expect this earnings season, let's bring in Howard Silverblatt, Senior Index Analyst at Standard & Poor's. He's at the S&P's New York office. Mr. Silverblatt, welcome to Bloomberg News. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Uh, you just heard Sheila's report, and I was struck by something that uh, you told our radio folks not too long ago. You said that given the uh, global economic downturn, that Wall Street strategists have been, in your words, quicker to embrace the negative. Do you still see that? Uh, in general, yes. They're quicker to embrace all the negatives, the charges, and the economic uh, implications uh, on a line by line basis more than the bottom up. That said, they're also slower to walk away from it and accept that the economy has, has changed. So, for that reason, second quarter, the top down was totally off the mark and the bottom up was better. But in general, the top top down incorporates the changes quicker, but they're also slower to uh, to move away from it. Okay, you expect third quarter earnings to be down 9.3 percent versus Which a year good. ago. Yeah. Yeah. You say that's good? Good compared to the 18 percent we were off before and the 39 percent the quarter before that, or fourth quarter last year, which was the worst and the only negative we've ever had. So we've gotten progressively better, okay, and less bad is good still lives in the third quarter. Fourth quarter in 2010 is a different story. But right now, we're turning the corner, so hopefully you're making that turn on a nice U or W, whichever way you want to go on it, uh, hopefully not the W, and things are getting better uh, on the bottom line. But most of it is because of cuts, just like uh, Sheila said. The cuts are what's doing it for Q2. They're expected to do it for Q3. The top line is not good. We're looking for another double-digit decline on the top line. Now, first thing, how, how much longer can companies continue to cut costs to continue making their numbers? At what point are they going to have to step up revenue growth? I, I'd love to be able to say Q3 or Q4, but we tried to quantify. We went into the 10 Qs, and we get a lot of texts and a lot of discussions. We've cut this, we've cut that, but we don't get the head count. We don't get how much might have been moved from, from the U.S. to abroad or how much may have gone to doing uh, 20 ounces of product to 19.4. So we can't quantify how long, much longer they can do it. Obviously, we're expecting the third quarter and some into the fourth. But you can only cut so much. You still have to have so many people for production. Eventually, you need to grow that top line in order to grow the bottom line. And that's what we're looking for, the sales. To say on a long-term basis, with better margins, you're growing your sales. So then how can companies at this very early stage of economic recovery grow sales slowly? Two ways. Well, well, the, the, slow, the slow way, as, as you said, is, is internal, organic. They, they, they attempt to increase product and customer base. The quick way, which we think they're going to do, is M&A, once they think it's safe to come out. They've got the two major items for M&A. One is cash, which is an all-time high for the industry. It's over 10 percent of market value. And the other one is that Treasury shares that are sitting from all those buybacks. Companies have spent a lot on buybacks, and now they can use those shares. Don't forget, individuals usually like shares more in a, an M&A deal because it's typically tax deferred. So we think when they're ready to go out there, they're going to do M&A, and they may do a premium because they need to bring in those sales quick and let it go down to the bottom. So right. the companies they acquire may be separate. We may not have that synergy uh, as much on, on the longer term because you're going to have a quarter or two to show me the result. It's not going to be in a year and a half we'll have a profit out of it. Well, well Howard, as you mentioned, uh, hopefully not a W-shaped recovery, but as, as you're well aware, last year's fourth quarter was the worst quarter in history. Uh, so talk to us about this fourth quarter going forward. Can it get any worse? <laughs> uh, it, it, if it gets any worse, we're all gone. I mean, it was the, the, the index lost more in one quarter, $202 billion than it ever made, which was 194. The, because the earnings were negative, a very small number, statistics are off the wall. We're expecting fourth quarter to be up over 16,000 percent. It's the comparisons are, are almost meaningless on there. You've got to look beyond that, look at the actual earnings and maybe a couple of years ago to see what they did in 2007 or 2006. If you think we're recovering from the whole item, we're not. Even 2010, which is estimated to be up 35 percent, is still 16 percent off 2006. The market price is, is off 25 percent from the 2006. So we've got a long way to go on this recovery. Right now we're dealing, have we made the turn, are we headed up, and is it a U as compared to a W? Howard, why are you suggesting fourth quarter 09 results will be more important than the third quarter season Look that we're it. approaching? 
a, a couple of items. We're going to see what consumers did, whether they spent or not. We're hoping they spend, even though it may not be on the high margin items, just like on, on housing and the clunkers. They're willing to spend if they see the bargain, so that's a positive item. And corporations are going over their 2010 numbers now, what they actually make. What are my widgets doing? What are my sales? What are my uh, customers telling me? And if they see a better time out there, which would be a positive indicator, they'll start spending on CapEx. They may not be hiring, but they won't be firing. So Q2, uh, Q4 is going to be telling for those items, right. as, as, as well as the items of what their forward guidance for 2010 is, where they think they're going to be, and more importantly, how I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there because I'm increasing sales, because I've got more customer base, because right. my production is different. So there's going to be a lot of leading in Q4, which is going to uh, take place. And Howard, in about 20 seconds, you are expecting an improved earnings picture? Yes, down 9% compared to 18%, but again, the sales is a double-digit decline. Howard Silverblatt of Standard & Poor's joining us from S&P's offices here in New York. Always good to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you.